Okay, it doesn't look like I could run two microphones at the same time. So the microphone on the audio recording here is going to sound hollow, like in an echo chamber. So I apologize. You can look at the video. That will probably have a better sound. Now I was looking into the topic of tithing. I searched the word tithe, uh, the word tithing, and tithes, plural. Now, if you go and check the word tithe, notice it's Matthew and Luke and nowhere else in the New Testament. None of the Pauline epistles. If uh, you use the word tithing, there's one place it shows up. It's every three years, and it, it's not just the Levite priest that gets it, but the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled, Deuteronomy 26, 12. And if I put in plural tithes, then we do get verses in Hebrews, which is probably written by Paul. But it's in none of the Pauline epistles addressed to the churches. And there's a, a reference in Luke 18, 12. And if you look at that reference to tithing in Luke 18, 12, it's the Pharisee and the publican. And the Pharisee is the negative guy who tithed and fasted, although those both are probably good. It is the publican who was justified. Uh, and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Luke 18, 13. Nothing about the gospel, nothing about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ at this point. And Jesus says in Luke 18, 14, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So the point here is not about tithing, but uh, uh, about the publican having this repentant state. God be merciful to me, a sinner. Admitting he's a sinner, he's not perfect while the other one was just listing the good things he did, excuse me, and didn't recognize, the Pharisee didn't recognize he was a sinner too. All right, so the main text used for tithing probably is in Hebrews 7. And again, you don't find it anywhere in Paul's epistles, him suggesting for anybody to tithe. There's no direction to the churches to tithe. So Hebrews 7, 1, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. 7, 2, To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that, also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Notice the point here is not the tenth tithing, but the fact that he's a king and a priest. That the, the glory here is to Jesus Christ. It's not about the money. Hebrews 7, 3. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. They, the tithes often went to the Levitical priesthood, and this is showing that Jesus is our high priest. Hebrews 7, 4, Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. So the point is the greatness of the person. Hebrews 7, 5, And verily they that are of the sons of Levi, 
who received the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. So you see, tithing is part of the law. Hebrews 7, 6. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. Hebrews 7, 7. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. 8. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. Those men are referred to the sons of Levi who received the office of the priesthood. They're not talking about the church here receiving tithes. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. And as I may so say, Levi also, who receiveth tithes, paid tithes, in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? 12. For the priesthood being changed, there is made a necessity of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. 15. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. This is about Jesus Christ being our high priest. 16. Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Right? Uh, for he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. 18. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. 19. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by which we draw nigh unto God. So there's nothing here about tithing in the church, but we'll look, we'll look at it. We'll look more at this. Hebrews 7.20, And inasmuch as not without an oath he was made a priest. 21, For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The focus here is on the priesthood, that Jesus Christ is high priest and king. Uh, the focus is on Christ, not on money. Hebrews 7.22 By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Let's read that again. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. 23 And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But 24, but this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. 25, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. The point is that Jesus, our high priest, ever liveth to make intercession for us, not that we tithe. 26. For such an high priest became us, who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. 20, Hebrews 7.27. Who needeth not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice, 
first for his own sins, and then for the people's, for this he did once, when he offered up himself. Talking about Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. Hebrews 7, 28. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the Son who was consecrated forevermore. So there's nothing in here that says now the church should tithe. But let's look at this. So um, take, for example, no, uh, Matthew 6, 24, No man can serve two masters, for he, either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't, you can't serve uh, God and money. First Timothy 6.10, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So there's no mention of tithing in the Pauline epistles, in the ad addresses to the church. In fact, even if you look here, um, in Acts 15, the Gentiles the, came into the church, and the question is, what were they supposed to do? Um, so Acts 15, 20, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. And then, so Acts 15, 29, he told them that ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if ye keep ye yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. So in reference to the law, there's no mention, oddly enough, of telling them they need to tithe. Okay. Uh, let's look at... Often, I notice Baptist churches seem to consider tithing an important element for uh, uh, qualifications for elders, deacons, and such things. So, let's see. Um, let's see if we can find the qualifications for... Uh, perhaps bishop. Here it is, 1 Timothy 3, 2. This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. That's 1 Timothy 3, 1, 2. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Three, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One, uh, four, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Five, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? First Timothy 3, 6. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Seven, moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Then they go into deacons. And we'll look at that too. But notice, it doesn't say he should be a tither. I think it mentions hospitality because a lot of the initial churches were run out of houses. If, in fact, if you go um, church house. Um, 
Romans 16, verse 5, likewise greet the church that is in their house. 1 Corinthians 16, 19, the end of that, with the church that is in their house. Colossians 4, 15, at the end of that verse, and the church which is in his house. Um, and Philemon 1, 2, to the church in thy house. So I suspect that this hospitality is important if he has a church in his house, for example, um, ruling well his own house. Um, it does say that he should not be greedy of filthy lucre. So there's no mention of him tithing here. Um, I mean, he probably should be the kind of person that's not covetous and not greedy, so he's probably giving. But there's nothing here about the bishop needing to tithe. I mean, we know there's no mention of tithing in any of the Pauline epistles. Obviously, it's not in any of the qualifications, but there are warnings about greed uh, regarding money. Um, Paul himself Let's see. Acts 20, 34, Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with, with me. Look. Uh, so you see, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. That's Acts 20, 24. Um, Acts 20, 33, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Paul says, Acts 20, 34, Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. Paul uh, paid for himself largely. Um, I, I do know things um, people sent for his needs, but never anything about tithing. Uh, for example, parents, children... I'll show you something else here. Second Corinthians twelve fourteen. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. Uh, the idea is you know, he's not looking to get things from them. He's looking to give. So now you might think, so Jesus, the high priest, the pastor must be the priest. But if you look up the word priesthood, you see, uh, let's see. 1 Peter 2, 5, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2, 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's the believers uh, under our high priest, Jesus Christ. The pastor is, is there is... Um, First Timothy 2, 5, for there is one God and one mediator 
between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. The pastor is not your mediator between you and God. You come directly to God through Jesus Christ. Um, so there's a problem there about who to tithe to. There is no uh, priest that you would give a uh, tithe to. Now, I do believe the Levitical priest would be in a temple. So if we look at temples in the New Testament, so that would be um, uh, particularly the Pauline epistles. 1 Corinthians 3.17, if any man, uh, uh, 3.16, 1 Corinthians, know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So going to the temple to tithe, ironically, would be you. Is that what it would be? Um. Am I saying that, uh, you know, I, I, let me show you. Double, double, probably honor is spelt that way. 1 Timothy 5, 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So does that say they should get the tithes? They should be dealt money out of the tithes. No, it doesn't mention tithes once in the Pauline epistles. That should bother you how often people push for tithing of members and it's never addressed to the churches. Never. And when they talk about things like double honor, there's nothing about that being taken out of any tithe there that would indicate an offering and they're worthy of a good offering, but not it, nothing to do uh, with tithing there. I, I hope that makes sense. So let's see, what other properties do we have for uh, tithing? Certainly there is giving in the New Testament in, in many places. So I'm not saying we, we shouldn't give. Um, let's see. So everything's different. I, I, I really, I don't see how you're going to justify tithing. You're welcome to try and answer here um, and uh, comment underneath the video. But there is... There, oh, look, here, watch this. Not under law. Romans 6, four, uh, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Tithing is under the law. Um, Galatians 4.21. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not... Uh, Galatians 5.18, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. If you look at Galatians, you'll see he's talking about circumcision, how, you know, circumcision, you, you're not, you don't need to get circumcised. That was under the law, and in fact, it started circumcision way before then. I'm pretty sure it was under Abraham, if I remember correctly. So if you go to Galatians, if you... Yeah, let's look at circumcision as an example of the law and that we don't, it's not required. So Moses circumcised, let's do circumcised. Genesis 17.10, this is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. So that circumcision goes way back to the book of Genesis. In Genesis 17.10, 
under Abraham. But if you look up, say, the word tithe, that first appears in Leviticus. And if you look up the word tithing, Deuteronomy, and plural tithes, um, uh, so Genesis 14.20, which is also Abraham. Genesis 14.20 is the Melchizedek. Um, and it says, and, and uh, 14.18, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. 19. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. So circumcision was under Abraham and tithing, Abraham tithed to the king of, of, of Sodom, I mean Salem. Um, uh, let's see. And Abraham said to, king, to the king of Sodom, um, save that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Abraham at this point, somewhere around here, he he gave Melchizedek um, a tithe. Where do we see that? Genesis 14, 20. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies by thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. So that is to Melchizedek, and that's Abraham, the same person that got circumcised. And you very well see in Galatians 5, Paul uses circumcision as an example. Um, circumcised. Galatians, see, Galatians 5, 2. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Galatians 5, 3. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is debtor to do the whole law. Circumcision went back to under Abraham, just like tithing went back to under Abraham. I, I don't see any clear scriptural justification, but I do see cases where um, a preacher is warned, uh, a bishop is warned to not be given to filthy lucre in Titus 1.7. For example, he should be a good steward, certainly, but also not given to filthy lucre, not covetous, um, uh, blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. So that's, that's it on tithing. I don't know what else I can say. Thank you for listening. If you think you can justify tithing, let's see you do it. Um, the focus in Hebrews is on Jesus Christ, the one who died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. Thank you for listening.